Hey, are you mystified by the whole idea of creativity? Well, I want to help, and maybe I can just clear a few things up. The Flight of the Artist There is no use in forcing the issue, awaiting the muse to reach down and bless you. If you're left in wonder, confusion, deflation, then waste not a moment on some new creation. For art hath no enemy greater than doubt. Art flows from surety, in and without. Confidence only can fan passion's fire. Without it, can a work ever inspire? Those not so moved must never suppose that they will take flight with the wings to compose. The world must be peopled with those who are bound to stand on the earth with both feet on the ground. But let them not falsely go seeking for lauds when they aren't the ones who were kissed by the gods. Only the few have been chosen to fly. Groundlings will futilely toil if they try. It is said that Poetry is the language of philosophy, and this poem certainly has an awful lot of philosophy in it. It seems to be indicating that if you are creative, you'd know that from a pretty early age. It would be revealed, obviously, to you and to all of the people around you. The flip side of that is that you would also know from a very early age if you're not creative, because it hasn't been made distinctly obvious to you and to all of the other people around you. The poem also indicates that if you have any doubts or lack of confidence, then you probably shouldn't be tampering with creativity. Then the poem closes with this advice. If you are creative, you are chosen, and those people should be allowed to fly. If you're not creative, you should accept your fate because you'll only be wasting your time if you try to be. If you haven't guessed it by now, I think the sentiment expressed in this poem is baloney. 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 Creativity is just not this mysterious, and it doesn't seem, it doesn't have to be mystical magical. It's work. The whole idea of venerating the creative is certainly not new, and it still goes on today. You can surf all over the internet to see that this sentiment is still alive and well. It's making priests and prophets out of creative people. In reality, it's just kind of pretentious, isn't it? I once had a professor in graduate school tell me that creativity could not be taught. That would be like teaching talent, he said, and that would be impossible. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at some definitions of creativity as they exist in some of the most popular online dictionaries. So here's the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition. The ability to create and the quality of being creative. Here's the Cambridge definition. The ability to produce original and unusual ideas or to make something new or imaginative. And if you just type the word into Google, you get this. The use of the imagination or original ideas, especially in the production of an artistic work. You know, when you take the window dressing away from creativity, it's pretty basic. Creativity is nothing more than the synthesis of ideas towards a product. It's a process. <laughs> That's it. It's just not that complicated. But that doesn't mean it's always easy. By the way, this is not to diminish the importance of talent. Creativity in the hands of a truly talented person can be transforming, transporting, we can all recognize and appreciate talented or extremely skilled people, even from an early age. Talent is huge, and honestly, sometimes it takes years for a person to even really learn what their talent is. But talent is only part of the creative equation. And history is full of really talented people who were surpassed by lesser talented people who applied curiosity, 
imagination, discipline, and just plain hard work to the talent that they did have. Take a look at Teddy Roosevelt, one of the most recognized presidents in U.S. history. Look at that grin. <laughs> he seemed to exude confidence and charisma. He was a pretty big deal. He got his face carved in the side of a mountain for crying out loud. What you might not know is that Teddy Roosevelt spent his childhood as a sick, frail kid. Amongst other things, he had a severe case of debilitating asthma. Early on, from all outward appearances, it wouldn't look like a sickly little kid would have much going for him. And one could also argue that Roosevelt was a man of average to above average talent and skill. But what he did have in spades was tenacity, imagination, determination, and persistence. And these traits have more to do with creativity than talent does. Historians often muse about Roosevelt's desire to not be sick and how he embraced a physically strenuous lifestyle to counter the ailments that plagued him as a child. As a result, he, he famously adopted an outdoorsman, explorer, cowboy, horseman, rough rider persona. Did you know that Teddy Roosevelt even got shot in the middle of one of his stump speeches? And he kept doing the speech. He refused medical attention until the speech, which took 84 minutes, was over. <laughs> wow. So this guy, who was sickly and frail as a child, later adopted a very famous motto for himself. Get action. Here's a quote from Teddy Roosevelt. Get action. Do things. Be sane. Don't fritter away your time. Act. Take a place wherever you are and be somebody. Get action. And you know what? That's what creativity is like. Get action. Get action! Get action! Thomas Edison, perhaps the most well-known inventor in recent history, shared this get action sentiment. Edison famously was the first to invent recorded sound. Think of that. There was no recorded sound before he invented it. If you wanted to hear music, then you actually had to be in the presence of a musician. He invented a reliable electric light bulb, the first city power grid, he founded General Electric, he invented motion picture film and the first movie camera. The very idea that you're watching me right now is all because of Thomas Edison. <laughs> Thomas Edison was never fully appreciated by the scientific community as a great scientist. He had no formal training, and he didn't fully understand alternating current because the math was more complex than he knew how to do. But they saw him as being really good at solving problems. Solving problems was like play for Thomas Edison. And solving problems is an exercise in creativity. Thomas Edison was clearly a creative genius, but this had less to do with him being touched by the muse and more with his ability to make connections, rolling up his sleeves and getting busy, and not being intimidated by failure over and over and over. Thomas Edison was also great for some pretty epic quotes. He famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And here's one of my favorites. He once said, Opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and it looks like work. So in a real sense, creativity is not your talent. It's what you do with it and what you do with it and what you do with it. It has everything to do with action. Get action! Get action! It's a process that looks for new ways of seeing that looks for new angles, that seeks to solve problems. It's a process that asks the dumb questions, that strives to make connections. It's a process that looks for as many ideas as possible in order to find the best one. And this process applies to the arts, the sciences, the humanities, athletics, really anywhere.
I've had friends and students tell me, well, I'm just not creative. And the only real answer to that is, well, I guess you're right, if you say so. Don't become a self-fulfilling prophecy. You might actually be really creative and you never even knew it. Just remember, creativity is a process and processes can be learned and developed and improved, just like tap dancing or welding or tuvin throat singing. Creativity is not about confidence. It's not about surety. Sometimes it is downright scary, but it's about doing. It's about trying. It's about getting your feet wet and keeping them wet. You just gotta get started and that's up to you. So I hope this video has helped demystify creativity a little bit for you. It really is very simple at heart. It is simply the synthesis of ideas towards a product. That's it, boom. Hey everybody, if you found this video interesting or helpful, I hope that you will like and subscribe. This channel is dedicated to creativity and all of the fun that can be had with it. Uh, until next time, my name's Pete and it's a creative life.